Morning, Saturday. I feel like shit. I relapsed on carbs and tobacco. Really pisses me off. But I'd say carbs have been. This is like yesterday was my third day, and last night I just devoured, you know, like a large pizza. It wasn't even good pizza. Like I got the least good pizza, Pizza Hut. <laughs> I just wanted the junk food in my face. So now I feel fat. Um, I feel like shit. I didn't realize how lethargic in general carbs made me. So if anything, I'm going to take this as a win and read about myself to some, some kind of low-carb diet. I don't know if I'll go keto. I'm kind of thinking uh, carnivorous, you know, like meat only, but that's kind of expensive. I don't know. We'll see. The re results I see in carnivorous are pretty good. People get, you know, rather uh, low body fat, surprisingly, by eating that. And the way I lift, I think it might be good for me in that way, too, because I, I still lift heavy, even though I'm a little older. I like to do three sets of four. It just tears, you know, your muscles apart so that they grow, and maybe all that protein will help. You know, I don't know. I'll, I'll talk to my friend. She's a doctor. I'll see what she has to say. Um, yeah, bought a pack of smokes. Smoked those. Haven't bought another pack in like two or three days. So it's good, you know. Um, but still, it's failure. I don't respond well to failure. Typically, I beat myself up and tell myself I'm a, a giant piece of shit that doesn't deserve good things or something. And I think this time it's just, no, like, it was a mistake. Like, you're trying to quit carbs, complete new diet, you know, and nicotine, the most addictive substance that you know of, at least top five, probably. So, pretty normal to fall down on that, you know? So, that, that's a good positive spin on things. You know, I call it a reframe. My friend in North Carolina taught me that, how to reframe, reframe things in a positive light. You know, you gotta acknowledge the negative, but you can reframe it to where it's, it becomes um, an asset to your journey forward, not something that holds you back, right? Like I can be full of shame and doubt and question my value, or I can reframe it and say, these negative events that cause suffering can push me forward towards healthier goals, right? Like, you, you, get, the, you get the choice to be either or. Uh, what else? Oh. Something that's been bothering me, unrelated, sort of. So I do a lot of work with uh, the Hindu goddess Kali. She's complicated. All the Hindu gods are complicated. That's what I like about them. But there's all this garbage online saying things like, hey, be careful with Kali, it's really powerful energy, like it's gonna like uproot your life and all this stuff, you know, like scaring people away from that energy. And I'm just gonna say right now that that's total bullshit. If you're, if that's the life you're living as a result of Kali, then I'm gonna say you're doing it wrong. That's not how Kali is at all. Jesus was right in saying that the truth is the most powerful thing in the world, and so is love. Those things are the same once you get on the mystical perspective, but nonetheless, love is the most powerful thing in the world. That's what Kali does. She's like the ideal mother of removing things in your perception that are messed up, that are causing you pain and suffering. She just removes them. That's it. You know, like, like I just kind of talked about, there was a time where if I made a mistake, it reflected my self-value. Like, I'm a piece of shit, da 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 and then I start going down. Well, today, what's different is I don't see things that way. Like, I might for a second, but then I become aware, and I'm like, no, that's not true. That's a delusion, right? Like, shame is a delusion. And so, I can see things in a different light, like a positive light. And it was gentle the way she did it. Like, I didn't even know she did it. Like, I was just... It's probably a year ago I made a mistake about something. I don't know, maybe it's, it's buying crypto mining equipment. I can't remember. But all of a sudden I realized I wasn't seeing myself that way anymore. Like it clicked on me. Like she was so, so gentle and subtle about it. 
like she helped me without me being without me knowing I was being helped and that's one of the things I really like about her energy and just the Hindus in general tend to be that way like the Hindu uh, mythology so I don't know I just want to tell people like that like stop saying shit about things you don't understand because you're pushing people away like seriously if you're, if you're afraid of Kali like you don't have to be at all um, just like Jesus you don't have to be afraid of him either you know, should, maybe the people that represent him are assholes, but not the dude himself. So, I just had to get that out of the way. <clears throat> it's Saturday. Like I said, I'm tired. Too many carbs. I made my bed this morning. That's good. We're putting this piece of shit aside. I think that's actually going to be the name of it. Piece of shit. Um, I was down... talking with my landlord, I was paying my rent, I was late on rent, which is funny because I calculated how much I make an hour this week and it's like 120 bucks an hour, but I don't have the clientele quite yet, like I just picked up another company that's probably going to double what I have today and if that happens, I don't have to worry about anything anymore, but, so the pipeline's built, you know, you just got to fill the pipeline so the cash flows through easily. Um, Anyway, they got this huge spot. As soon as you walk in, like all the way back at the tattoo parlor, they have this big wall. It's a black wall, and it's just blank. Like there's nothing there. And I was like, dude, you guys need an art piece right there. You know, like that'd be <laughs> really nice if someone came in and they saw that art piece and it caught their attention and they're like, holy shit. And so I just planted that seed and I took off. And uh, I don't know, I saw him, he was smoking in front of my door. They always go to my door and smoke, so they're not seen by the public, which is annoying. But, I saw him, and he's like, hey, do you want to do a piece right there? You know, like a, a commission custom piece. I'm like, hell yeah, I do. It's like, I'll trade you, you know, ink for art, you know? Like, you finish up some ink I got in my back, we'll, we'll go from there. And that's it. So we went in, we measured everything up, we found out how long and wide we want it, and, uh, I'm trying to get into his head and like get his personality. He's he's me. He's a lot like me. Very uh, I don't know. High contrast, prime colors like strong prime colors, black, white, red, yellow. So I gotta figure out what best um, composition will will fit his personality. He definitely likes my barbed wire. He really likes that. So. We'll try to throw that in there, and then, uh, I guess we'll just go with that. He listens to Biggie Smalls, which is weird, he's 10 years younger than me, but, I mean, it is Biggie. Who doesn't listen to Biggie, right? That was kind of cool. So we're going to put this aside, we're going to bring out a piece that I've been messing with. I really don't like it, but it has good texture on the base and I think we can build that texture up into something that he'll enjoy and you know of course I'll present it to him uh, to see if he likes it and we'll just we'll go from there but we're gonna be a little different today we're gonna be using a lot more power tools and I think we'll see hang in there You know, business is scary like that, though. If you try to... Like, I've built maybe four or five businesses from nothing. Like, I didn't have anything behind me to do it. Like, I just did it, you know? And if I hadn't had, you know, such destructive tastes in my mating partners, I probably would have been retired by now. But, I don't know, I like, I like dark women. Like, inside. So... <laughs> 
uh, it's like this fixer thing. Like I want to fix them, and I also there's like this dance that happens when you date someone that's highly manipulative. It's always like this game of chess that I always found interesting, um, in a very unhealthy way. Interesting. Now today. I will study someone that I might be interested in for quite a while and see if I can start picking up some of that bullshit, you know, because I'm, I have a radar for it, and instead of ignoring that radar, I listen to it, and if I start seeing signs of high integrity, you know, thought, action, deed, or misaligned, then, you know, they're, I'm not, they're not coming in the circle, you know, so, uh, so I'm done dating. I'm just done dating. I'm fucking. I'm done with it. It's so stupid. But business. <laughs> Maybe I'm sure people that were born into money have it different. I was not born into money. I was the opposite. And I've learned. Well, my first businesses were I stole drugs from my parents and sold them to people in high school. I was a sixth grader selling drugs to you know seniors in high school. So that was cool. And then I learned no one knew how to roll a joint. So I taught myself in my room how to roll a joint. And then I would sell the joints for more than I was selling just the weed, you know? So like even at the age of 12, like I had this, I could see a market. <laughs> I could see the market and I could see where the holes are and the opportunities were. And you know, I would capitalize on those. But so I, you know, not everyone has that. But I did for some reason. I don't know where it came from. I think I was just born with it. Like I can zoom out and just see like the big picture of things, and then I can see where my competition is, and then I can see where their weaknesses are, and I'll head towards their weaknesses. You know, I'll create a strength in my product that snaps at their weakness, and then I'll just I'll wipe them out. So I know it's a little vicious, but you know sometimes business is that way. Besides, like, the way I pay people that work for me, like, I treat them like a human. I want them to be able to raise their family without having to live on food stamps, you know? Like, come on. Plus, I don't make a lot for myself. Like, if I build a business and I get it set up to where it's paying, everything's self-sustaining, like, I might have to consult with some of the managers or something once in a while. If that business pays me, you know, 70 to 100,000 a year, like, I'm fine. Like, I don't need, even if it has, you know, five, $10 million uh, in sales a year, like that 70 to 100,000 paid to me every year is fine. Like, I don't need more than that. So that's how I approach business. I want people to be able to raise a family on, on one income and not have, you know, their kids abandoned to daycare, which costs like, what is it, like 1,200 a month or something right now. It's stupid. So I'm putting an end to it. Um, but the fear with business is you do have to trust yourself. You know, I can do the zoom out, I can see the weakness, I can see the strengths, and I can see where I want to head with my products and product development. But you still have to trust that. Especially if it's a market no one else knows about. You know, my market that I'm making $120 an hour or whatever, not too many people I know know about that market. So I had to like figure that out and just trust that process. And what that looks like for me still today is there's a lot of fear inside. Like my brain, the monkey mind, I don't, I'm not gonna call it my monkey mind. I generate a lot of fear when I move into the unknown like that. I'm still very afraid. I experience a lot of fear and like I drum up the thoughts of like, don't do it. You're gonna fuck up, you know, like just stop, you made a mistake. And what I do now today is when that kind of thinking goes, you know, it's like an autopilot, a bad habit. When that happens, I stop what I'm doing and I sit in the quiet and I grab that thinking with my focus and I just focus forward. And that thinking will start to dissipate and change, right? Like I have to take control of that thinking. I'm not a victim to it anymore. And so I changed that thinking into like, I might fail, so what, right? And I'm just going to keep pushing forward. And to me, that's the way you do it. Like you have to push into the darkness of the unknown if you want 
new things in your life, like different things. And so, because I'm not good at corporate world, I can't deal with all the, the bullshit. I have to start businesses. Because you can't, I don't know. In my industry, you can't really support yourself hardly on one person's income. You know, like it's really hard. So, like construction just doesn't pay what it used to. Um, <laughs> yeah, so always push forward into the fear. Walk into the fear. Like, drive into it. It, it gets better as you move forward, but you just got to move past the doubt and the sabotage that you've built over the years. Like, that's your responsibility. You created those things in your head, but now it's time to uncreate them and replace them with something better, right? So it starts with the radical accountability like this stuff in my head is mine i created this let's recreate it
Kind of a new awareness. Uh, I'll go anywhere for good ideas that might help me. Like, I don't care how stupid they, the source is. Like, I read astrology sometimes. Not it's not, I don't read the stuff, you know, that's like two paragraphs long and the advice column of New York Times or whatever. But, like, I go deep on it. And anyway, I'm a Leo which is a pain in the ass. In Kabbalah, we're, um... So I'm a Leo in Kabbalah, which uses their own calendar. But I'm also a Leo in standard, you know, what is it, tropical astrology or something? I don't even know. I'm a Leo in both, so I'm like, okay, I'm probably safe. Like, I'm probably a Leo. But that doesn't matter. Uh... What was I gonna say? So, I was reading about what it looks like to be a Leo, kind of like in the negative, destructive side. Because in Kabbalah, which is Jewish mysticism, Leos are uh, the most powerful zodiac. You know, we kind of are different in their perspective. But, there's a huge but, uh, we're the most destructive zodiac sign. And on top of that, we're the most delusional. Personally, I relate with that. I am, uh, in my youth especially, an extremely destructive and um, delusional person. I am 100% sure people were referring to me as a sociopath of sorts, I, or at least a narcissist, bare minimum narcissistic personality. I've gone to real therapists, PhDs from uh, like Colorado Boulder, Stanford, stuff like that. You know, I brought up my concerns about narcissism. They're like, no, I am close. So that's good, right? But nonetheless, like those are my negative traits. Like when I'm on my the negative side of my personality, that's like it can get really destructive. I don't hurt people as much as I can. Like it's more like auxiliary pain. Like I'm so self-destructive that like fires just spooting out all over and people get burned, you know, in the process. But today, you know, I can still lose my temper sometimes because I'm a human. But, you know, the ideal situation is I lose it and then a couple days after chilling out, like, I own my behavior. Like, hey, I shouldn't behave this way. You know, I was afraid of abandonment or something. Usually it's abandonment or something. And then, you know, I do my best to acknowledge that behavior and address it and heal it and all that shit. But, nonetheless, another aspect of my negativity can be possessiveness and... I didn't think that was true because I'm sneaky. Um, For the most part, I don't care. If I'm dating someone, I don't care what they do. If you just got done fucking a guy before you met me, and you guys are gonna go hang out all night, like, I'm gonna be like, no, that's not cool, right? Like, I'm not stupid. But for the most part, I'm like, you know, like, hey, man, it's like your life, go find yourself, right? Go run free. But, 
that's my outward behavior. Inside, in my head, I have this person positioned into a place of like um, possession, right? Like if their energy represents who they are, like in my head, it's it's mine, you know. Like that's my peripheral, and so well, not peripheral, but well, kind of. Um, but to let them know I don't have that, and to let myself know I don't have that, it's like, just go run and be free, right? So, that's how subtle and sneaky selfishness can be, and fear can be. It's like, in our outward behavior, we're actually doing what's cool, and what's good, but inside, in our heart and in our minds, you know, we have these selfish intents. And I think that's been strong lesson for me throughout my whole life is how subtle selfishness and fear, dishonesty can hide in my heart, you know, and they can hide behind things that look good. So like that's always something to look out for and, you know, often it comes across too in arguments and in, in someone with someone that's close to me, like someone I'm sleeping with someone I'm sleeping with that I want to continue having a relationship with, not someone I'm just passing off, but, you know, no Jolly Ranchers. Um, there can be an argument in that, and I think I'm, I'm right because I'm doing what's good, right? But, and I create an anger, a cloud of anger during that argument that hides all that selfishness. So someone told me, I was possessive towards them. I'd be like, shut the fuck up. Like, what are you talking about? I tell you to do whatever you want, right? And I'll get defensive and angry. Sometimes in my head, like, I'll roll my eyes back and be like, you're a fucking idiot. Like, I won't say that out loud, right? But in my head, that's kind of how I am. Like, I'll elevate myself above their intelligence and, like, look down on them for being stupid. That's my protective mechanism. And then sometimes, you know, it can take months just because I'm so dense. But I'll see that be like, oh, shit. Right? Like, I was being possessive. Like, way back in my intentions, in my subconscious, or my shadow, I did have those intentions of control, right? Like, control through freedom. Like, the government does it to us all the time. Like, the elections, right? We won't get into too much of that, but... Just study the idea of control through freedom. It's a real thing. Control through comfort, that's a real thing. You know? It's the great way to control and manipulate people is to keep them comfortable while you're doing it. And then they actually look forward to you doing it. Yeah. Fucked up.